we are going to start. Uh, I will request to our honorable speakers to carry on our uh, program now. And in this day three program, uh, today we are going to be enriched by the knowledge regarding uh, the cyber forensic from our two scholarly speakers. The cyber forensic is day by day taking a large part of investigation related to crime because the use of digital data is just a part of our life. How much we use the digital data that much this type of cyber security and cyber forensic, uh, cyber forensic importance will grow up day by day. And now I will request our speakers to enlighten us regarding this very, very much interesting topic. We are waiting to know about our this topic, cyber forensic. And uh, now the flag is to all of yours, Mr. Shumadit Basu and Ms. Reyoshi Sharkar. So we are going to start now. Sure, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so much uh, small number of participants still now. I hope so. Students are joining one by one. Uh, <laughs> um, 9 a.m. is quite early for them. I hope so. Um, Ma'am, do you want us to wait for some more time? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Vasu, what are you saying? Uh, Ma'am, do you want us to wait for some more time for the rest to join? Well, okay, take your time. That's no problem. <laughs> So I hope so our program is being started one by one our participants are joining. So please carry on. Uh, I am uh, now requesting to our two eminent speakers, Mr. Bashu and Ms. Sarkar to carry on the uh, rest of the program we are waiting for. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am, from our side. So uh, today our topic is cyber forensics. So as the ma'am already told us that increasing number of people, uh, more number of people are there into the cyberspace 
more we are into handling digital data so the cyber crimes are also increasing day by day and as the cyber crimes increases the need of cyber security the need of cyber experts and the cyber forensics also getting increased so now coming to cyber forensics let us first just have a brief idea of what this subject or what this topic is forensics like we know in our childhood or even today there in sony tv we have that uh, show called cid in that dr saruke used to do all the you know forensics stuff with the dead bodies or the evidences he used to examine all those things the same thing happens in cyber forensics too in cyber forensics what we do is the evid the cyber crime if there is a cyber crime already occurred then cyber forensics comes to the story now the cyber forensic experts collect the evidence they analyze it and then they form a documentation and finally they are present in the court so coming to the difference between cyber security cyber forensics and digital forensics it is like cyber security is prevention like i don't know whether it is properly visible or not cyber forensic uh, cyber security is the practice of defending computer servers or any electronic systems and networks from malicious attacks so cyber security is prevention before any cyber crime we need to prevent uh, or we need to take the all the measures to protect us from any cyber crime now cyber forensics comes to the story after the cyber crime has already occurred in cyber forensics first the cyber experts identifies whether the incident is actually a cyber crime or whether it is not because sometimes it is not always that whatever we see or whatever we are told is true so first they need to validate whether it is a cyber crime next they use they have to investigate the matter they need to collect the evidences then they need to examine the evidences and finally present in before the law and enforcement now if we talk about the difference between cyber forensics and digital forensics both are nearly same and it's just the two terms so it is the same thing often in cyber forensics the data which has been altered or maybe uh, in the cyber crime often some data breaches occur so cyber forensics experts also try to recover them back and get those data the need of cyber for forensics of course to produce the evidence in front of the court so that the actual criminal who has committed the cyber crime can get punishment next is to ensure the integrity of the computer system and to respond or to the high tech offenses start to enter crime goal is the same thing now this is all just a definition of what cyber forensics or digital forensic science says it is the use of scientifically driven uh, derived and proven methods towards the preservation collection validation identification analysis interpretation documentation and finally presentation of digital evidence derived from a digital source now all this uh, you can tell that this preservation collection validation these are all one one phases of this cyber forensic like when a cyber crime occurs all these steps need to be taken to finally produce the uh, produce the uh, evident uh, presentation in front of the court now where the okay so we will be discussing all these phases in detail in the latter part of the ppt now these are the communities where cyber forensics are uh, used in or maybe cyber forensics experts are engaged more like in law enforcement military business 
and fourth is academia as uh, ma'am already said in the beginning only that cyber forensics has a lot of scope for the students it like it is has many job opportunities there are many certifications available for this course so now before we move on to the next slide um team i have some questions to you like in our daily syllabus we uh, we have dealt with data structures right initially yes or no team we with data structures, right? So we deal with stack, we deal with queues, we deal with linked list, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, Trish, can you stop sharing your screen? Okay. So now think for a moment. If you're talking about a stack, what happens? you and you enter new data it comes in the bottom and then a new data comes in so how do we define stack here team anyone i mean what do we call i mean how if you're asked that which techno i mean which formation a stack follows or which formation a queue follows what do we say here Okay, among the participants present right in here, have you gone, I mean, till now, have you faced this uh, subject? Data structure? Yes, sir, the stack follows the uh, first in, last out. First in, last out, okay. And, uh, st uh, and the queue follows uh, first in, first out, FIFO method. FIFO method. Now, you tell me, suppose I'm giving a new entry, right? So where will that entry go uh, for a queue? Can you please repeat one second? Suppose I'm giving a new entry. So from where to where the entry flows in a queue? Sir, it depends on the capacity of the queue. Uh, okay. How many how many elements it can hold? Okay. Suppose I have a queue of five elements. Do not think about these elements and all. I'm standing in a bus, a bus stand, so I need to board a bus. Okay. So there are places of five people to stand in there. So if I need to be on the first, I need to cross all the spaces and then I need to stand in the first, right? Then comes the second, then third, then fourth, then fifth. Yes, yes, sir. One person boards the bus, the next person replaces it, right? Yes, sir. Now, while we write a piece of code for these things, um, we generally use a pointer or a variable. Uh, sometimes we define it as top, sometimes we define it as front, sometimes we define the other as rear, right? So if you have noticed, do we delete the data? Like suppose if we are emptying in queue, do we delete the data or do we just shift the pointer or do we shift the position of the variable from top to bottom or bottom to top? Are you getting my question? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. I mean, have you ever written a function that delete um, space number three? Delete space number four. Have you ever written that? No, I guess. The data seems to the data. Suppose I am having 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 in these five places. So have you deleted a data ever in a stack queue or any from anywhere? Have you deleted it? No, sir. Uh, either we uh, rewrite it or we just see the pointer. Exactly. So we never delete the data, we override it, right? So similarly in the cyberspace, if we are trying to, you know, if, suppose I'm downloading a file on my hard drive. So once a file is downloaded, it means it is there in my hard drive. Uh, if, if, you, if you see to uh, cinemas, you'll see in movies like people, uh, they, uh, hackers, I, there is a series in Amazon Prime, maybe the name of the series is Hacker. So what they do if they're programming something they crush their hard drive at the end because any data once stored inside our hard drives they are never you know they can never be deleted it can be i mean th there are several methods in cyber forensic to regain the data back now what do generally our computer or our system do for you know uh, making sure that the data are not recoverable i'll share the screen for two minutes and i'll give you a short view of that just a moment can you give me a confirmation 
uh, about my screen sharing. Alex sharing. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, can you see my utility open? Yes, sir. Okay. Suppose um, I want to erase. Okay, I cannot erase my Macintosh drive. Let me just plug in another drive. Just a moment. Yeah. Pausing you. I've been pausing myself for a moment. Okay. Suppose this is my drive and I need to erase it. Now, if I try to erase it, they will be giving me some options. These are the options which we get to select from here. If we go to security options, we see this is the fastest fastest method. And if we go here, uh, let us read one by one what it says properly. So this method says that this option does not securely erase all the files on the disk. A disk recovery application may be available to recover the file. We are following this right team. I repeat, this option does not securely erase the files on the disk. A disk recovery application may be available to recover the files. Moving to the next one. This option writes a pass of random data and then a single pass of zeros over the entire disk. It erases the information used to access your files and writes over the data two times. So what, what, what it's doing actually? It is setting a value of zero and running it twice over all the memory locations of your data drive, let it be an SSD or a hard drive. So in the first thing, what, what's happening? Uh, in, in this fastest option, it's doing nothing. It's just uh, shifting values. I mean, it, it's just shifting the location pointer. So the next time you store file, it will be just overridden. So easily it can be recovered. I mean, you can use a recovery tool or you can use some advanced technologies to recover the entire hard drive as it is. In this technique, it runs zeros over the entire disk twice, right? Next, if we move to the third part, it shows that this option is a DOE compliant three pass security days. It tries two passes of random data followed by a single pass of an unknown data over your entire disk. Now, random data, like if you ever use the function mat.rand, I'm talking about a random function. So what happens is here, first of all, um, it will give uh, layers of zeros and then it will bring out a random file, I mean random data. So what will happen the next time if somebody is trying to you know uh, figure out something from your device they will be first going through the random data and then they will be if, if, if a professional or if very much intelligent they will be finding out or if the technology is stronger they can find out your data but after you know a lot of hustle bustle going to the most secure part this option writes multiple passes of zero once and the random data over the entire disk erases the information used to access your files and writes over the data seven times. Now, team, tell me what do we understand from this part? What is when I mean what's exactly it does in the hard disk or to the hard disk? Anyone? What this feature does to the hard disk? Anyone? Team, tell me if you're not understood. I, I'll go. I'll go through it again. Okay. Let me take this and move. I'll try. So, uh, the first option uh, just uh, skip the CPU pointer, and the second option just uh, runs the zero in the uh, all location. Change the zero for the all memory location, and the third option is uh, uh, just uh, run a function that uh, assign a random value in the memory location. Okay. And the last option I can't understand. Okay. okay. Now, if we have been attentive and if you have tried to look what it writes once again, it never says it is deleting our data. 
from the fastest to the most secure option it says that it will write see if you see here this option writes a pass so it is writing again it's overwriting my files and folders and this erases the information used to access your files it's not deleting the files it's it's just removing the information which were used which can be used to access our files and writes over the data two times so again it is not deleting my data you're getting my point team it means that if i'm having a hard drive it will try to erase the data which can access my files but it is not exactly deleting my files again and then it's trying to give a random value over my files overwriting i mean see writing and writing so that it is not accessible in this state as well it, will, it writes two passes so it is again right it's not deleting my data it will again rewrite two passes of random data followed by a single pass and then it erases the information used to access our files and writes over the data three times so it will try to delete uh, the information which is used to access our files but not our actual files again because it cannot be deleted once it's stored in your hard drive and the most secure technique this uh, it writes multiple passes of zeros again it is writing so this is why once we store something in our devices it is actually never it can never be omitted unless you break the device so no matter how many passes of zeros we run over the entire drive, it's just make it difficult for the one to figure it out that what was there in your drive. However, not impossible ever. Getting my point team? Yes, sir. Now, there yes, is sir. a new thing which we can talk about right in this topic here. So, if your system is a bit damaged, what do you generally do? Or if your operating system is not beating, you try to plug your hard drive to a different PC or you plug a different hard drive in your PC, right? To check if it's working or not. Isn't it? Yes, sir, yes. So, now think of a moment that people, if, if, if they have a contact with, I, I, you know, uh, I have experienced this when I was in school. Um, there was a boy, I, I won't take the name, but he was very much smart and intelligent. He took he took out the processor and he took out the um, hard disk from a computer uh, from a computer in in my school back in the days to check out that uh, what are the data saved by the teacher uh, as a preparation of examination. It was it was uh, maybe for um, Pre board exam examination. So he he even took the processor. Ask me why? Because he was an expert. He he also can read the spaces in the CPU registers. Means what are the files which was last accessed? Now, if somebody is taking your hard disk off for a test, so definitely your hard disk is again vulnerable and open. I mean, if in if if it comes to direct contact. So. Sometimes we use applications like BitLocker so that if we are like turning, if you're even trying to use or insert a pen drive in our system, it will automatically, let me just move away from the screen because my pen drive has a lot of data. By chance, if I format it, yep. <laughs> so if somebody is taking our hard disk and our hard disk or the drive which they are being taken, which, which is being taken is under a encryption, let it be a bit locker or any other encryption. So tell me the possibilities that the user will be able to get our data and tell me the possibilities the user are not going to get our data. I mean, think for a moment. It's an encrypted drive because we're using bit locker and a person has it for the moment. So what are the possibilities according to you that the user can have our data right now? You can turn on your mic and speak, not a problem. People have different opinions. So it's a collective answer, always. Anyone? Jay Kostov. Okay, I'll take it as a no. See, if you try to apply BitLocker in our hard drives, most of the time we figure out that it asks for two processes. If it's a new drive, the fastest way will be to 
encrypt it using the space occupied by the drive. Suppose you have a new laptop and you made a new partition and you need to encrypt the drive. It will show that we should always use the faster, I mean, to, to make it faster, uh, uh, the, to accelerate the process of encryption, it will always tell you to use the least number of files, the least space used in the hard drive to go ahead with the encryption. However, it's an older drive. I mean, if you're using it for a long time and out of maybe 200 GB, it will have 180 GB. It will suggest you to encrypt the free space. I mean, to use the free space for encryption so that the time is again short. Now, it always gives you an option that you can also use both of them to make sure it's a lot more protected. Have we, have we come across this team ever? I mean, did you try this in your systems? Nobody. Yeah. Sir, DP. Uh, I couldn't get there were three answers together, maybe. <laughs> mm. Yes, Jeff. Sir. Sir, I could not hear properly. Can you repeat again? Okay. While we encrypt something, I mean, while we encrypt a drive in our PCs, it always asks us that if whether we want to continue with the fastest process or whether we want to continue with the slowest process. The fastest process at the times of a new hard disk, it will tell you to occupy only the space used so that the encryption type is faster. And uh, when it comes to the slowest process, it will tell you to um, encrypt the free space present in your hard disk. Just the opposite when we are having a lot of files, encrypting the, it, encrypting the free space for a shorter period of time or encrypt the full data back by, I mean, by using BitLocker, which will take a lot of time, but more secure. So what do you think, which possible, I mean, which option here will be giving you chances? I mean, the least and the most chances for your data to be taken away if your drive is being stolen from you. Mm, basically, it scans your computer to verify that it meet the system requirements. System requirements. Mm, did you uh, did you get the question, Jaim? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let us hear the question once from you. So, what was the question, Jaim? So basically, what are the options for encrypted? No, what are the chances of our data to be taken away by someone on an encrypted drive? The first option was if this free state has been encrypted. The second option was if the data is encrypted. So these are the two uh, options. So you have tried, uh, every one of you, I guess, you have tried encrypting your laptop, right? You have tried encrypting your hard drives using BitLocker. I'm asking this to everyone. Have you ever tried this before? No, sir. No, okay. So, Ishita is using a uh, genuine Windows. Okay, Jay. You have not tried, okay? Kostov? Sir, I, 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 I have not tried, sir. Okay, so all are having gen, genuine Windows here okay so this feature is not available in windows 10 home so if you're buying a new laptop your laptop will definitely most of the time comes with home uh, edition of windows so yeah so uh, on a genuine windows it cannot be tried because BitLocker is only available for pro and enterprise version uh Shresh, can you uh, just give them a demo um of how this BitLocker looks like and the encryption yeah sure okay You can start presenting your screen so that they can see from where do you open. And you're on mute. I'm sorry. Also, it seems like people are sleeping today. Everyone. It's a bright morning. Everyone's sleepy because tomorrow is Saturday.
or it can be also the forensics are boring. Yes, ma'am. So let us open the file manager once. This PC. Okay, you're having just a drive. Yeah. So let us open BitLocker once from the start menu. Manage bit locker. Okay, now before we proceed, uh, just show the win version of yours so that everyone knows that which version are we using for the moment that has bit locker and which what are the supported versions of bit locker. So right now we are using an enterprise operating system. Uh, this is uh, this is an activated system and running enterprise on it. Okay. So again, bit locker only supports on Windows. Uh, not windows it supports on enterprise and professional systems it can also run on workstations but not on home okay so now if we see that uh you can see that c bit locker we can see it on right now shreshi can you just show them turning off the protection or uh, um backing up the recovery key or suspend protection and then again try to do it provided if your data is not much encrypted then it will take a long time and also explain uh, the Azure ad account. Case. So do you want me to do this? Yeah. Hello. And should I only turn off the uh, bit locker, or you just want me to back up and then do those things? Oh, the full procedure. See, actually, team, what happens here? Um, we only uh. Since we, there is only one drive here and core isolation technology is on for this PC. So here we cannot show you that uh, how we're encrypting because it's always encrypted as you can see on the screen that uh, it shows for suspend protection. Now, if you see that uh, you randomly saw when you click on backup your recovery key, can you click on there? So we found it that there is an option as save your, um, uh, save to your ad account, uh, Azure ad account. Now what's Azure ad account? Suppose if I'm trying to hear this very properly, and this is an interesting thing. Team. If I'm trying to log into my PC and remotely, so remote desktop connection can automatically establish a secure connection from your other devices to your PC while in local network, right? Have you ever tried this again, team? No, sir. No. Okay. Uh, may I know? Uh, I mean, what are the uh, I mean, departments, uh, students? I mean, what are your departments? I mean, from which department are you all from? Actually, actually are, several departments are there, MCA and um, several departments like EST and other mood departments are there. Mix and match. Mix and match. OK, ma'am. So uh, th there are from IT, CAC, ECEs, right? C is so. How come team you haven't like tried any of this before? I have using Putty in Linux distribution. Putty, okay. So what? Why do you use Putty? Sir, it's a remote desktop connection. Okay, so Putty uh, and also Putty uses what type of network to connect to the remote desktop? I mean, sir, uh, you can use uh, network only. No, I mean, if you want to use like SSH, HTTPS, SSH, SSH. Good. So, where where are you till now? Now you're replying as well. Cool. So, what this type of applications do? They try to connect to the remote desktop using any of the following methods which will be available, right? As a tunnel. Now, when 
we are connecting our system to an Azure ad account, what happens is the moment we try to log into the Windows, it will ask us for our user ID and password. And as we give our user ID and password, our account will be logged in via Azure to our own desktop. So if somebody is using our Wi-Fi and try to access our PCs remotely, or suppose in colleges, what happens is our computers are connected where to where um, over a certain network. So anyone can uh, from any floor can uh, give a print from the top floor in the bottom uh, um, printer, right? For example, a teacher is sitting at the top and the principal wants um, a piece of file. So the teacher sitting in the CA department or the CC department can just give a print of the file directly into the principal's room because of the network connectivity, right? Because of networking in the in the college. So Shishi is sharing his screen. Yeah. Okay. So now what happens is Azure ad accounts they do not allow you to take your PC via remote unless you know the ID and password. Now suppose Shishi is sharing the screen and Shishi has a, her Azure ad account loaded in it. We will not be able to remotely access her ad account even if we have a Azure ID and password. That is how the data in your ad is protected. Are you are you getting my point? Team? Like uh, Ramandeep said that he uses Putty. So if there is an Azure ad account installed in uh, and used to log into the system, you will not be able to use any. Let it be RTP, let it be Putty, let it be other softwares, let it be quick access. Yeah, exactly. So you will not be able to remote desktop it. Because this ad account will not be uh, able to verify a signature of the device who is trying to access with the signature of the device which is actually registered for being accessed from. See my point, team? So this is just a small other way to secure your entire thing without even having a password. It means if you are using this entire desktop in an Azure ad account, your computer uh, is not hackable. I mean, you need to think about your password. You need to think about what you are using in the system because it will be organized and managed by Microsoft or Azure or Google based on the web services you take from. So if you're talking about, since we are right now in uh, the Windows operating system, not a Chromebook, it will be organized by Azure ad, that is Microsoft account. You getting my point, team? Rishab, yes. Yes, uh, Ramandeep. Let me know if it's still not clear. I'll explain it again. These are some interesting things. I mean, everyone. Please, uh, please explain it again. Okay. There are two types of account in a computer. One is a local account. One is a online account. So for Windows users, the online account is a Microsoft account. Uh, Shreshi, can we press Windows I? Browse through the accounts. Okay, so can you see that uh, we have our email address just below the name? It's written shreshtarkhan06 at gmail.com. Yes, sir. It means this is an online account, right? Yes. Now, if we click on access work or school at the last option, do you see shreshtarkhan at the studentambassadors.com? So this is the Azure Ad Connected account. It means if you try to log into this computer using shreshisarka0.com, you can do it using a remote desktop protocol. However, if you want to connect to this work account um, from a different PC, you will not be able to secure authentic connection because the signature won't match of this Azure Ad account with the device which you are using. It means that you can have access of the local account, local online account, that is the Gmail account. However, you will not be able to uh, work with this account. And obviously, the official account, the work account, will have all the details of the user. Now it makes sense to you, Rishabh? Yes, I agree. Clear. And the other, for, uh, and uh, Shreshi, can you go back to accounts? So, and the other form is an offline account. That's a local account where there will be no email address. It's just your name and a small password, which you get uh, by, you know, after buying a new laptop. Now, 
Mm, you know about uh, Windows Hello, right? The Windows fingerprint, the Windows Hello face, the Windows Hello pin. Uh, can we click on uh, sign options? These these options, security key, using a, a physical security key. Like for example, I have a PC and I do not want to type my password. I do not want to show my face. I mean, face recognition. I do not want to give my fingerprint. Some people are privacy free. They do not want to even share fingerprint on the laptops, or they do not want to scan their faces because few few PCs are so good enough they can have a retina scan. So they do what they do is they keep their password in a thumb drive, in a pen drive. They come in, they plug the pen drive in the PC, and their PC gets on. So these are the digital hello signatures from Microsoft, which again lets you to encrypt your system. You know, what is the difference between a normal login via, you know, uh, Microsoft password or a system local password rather than using this sign options that uh, that is Windows Hello? Do you know the difference between these two? Okay, let me explain you this. I am having a Microsoft password one two three four five six seven eight. So if this password is known by someone, then automatically the pass it can be opened. So whether your machine is online or offline. However, if if your PC is lost and the person knows your password, if you change the password for the first time, if you uh, definitely your laptop will not be connected to the internet because at your own, what happens when you open the laptop? It is automatically connected to the Wi-Fi. However, if it's stolen or taken by someone, the computer will not be connected to the Wi-Fi. Because it needs obviously it needs a password before it get, it get it gets connected. So the old password automatically opens up the system. But this pin has a verification over this. It means that if you are using a Microsoft Authenticator, talking about Microsoft, since we all are using Windows systems, few Linux and negligible Macs. So here, what we do is here, this pin helps you to add an additional security over your microsoft password it is directly synced with the deployment of microsoft you you change the pin your pc gets locked automatically it needs internet for sure and once a pin is activated it will also be reflected in your microsoft account have any of us tried here before by just logging into the microsoft account to check our device health and status of what is active what is not have you ever tried it from device uh, from accounts at microsoft.com and then devices Anyone? If not, no, sir, if not, not tried. Not tried. Okay. Not yes, tried. Okay. Guys, I think every one of you after the workshop today learn, I mean, go back home after the classes and then try to know the system which you're using cybersecurity, ethical hacking, digital forensics, cyber forensics. Mm, uh, securing your online payment transactions will not be much helpful to you unless you know the system which you're using. So if you do not know these small features, it means that you do not know how to use a PC. So the knowledge is restricted to turning on the PC, opening one to word files, joining a meet, closing the PC, and that's it. So if you restrict your knowledge only till these five things, it will not help you. You're getting my thing. You're getting my point team. Yes. So start doing practicals because you should know each and every. Uh, I mean, uh, if I proceed even with the workshop of digital forensics, it will not be much help to you because right now I believe that it seems that you are not yet experienced enough to operate a computer for the moment. You need a lot of lot. I mean, lots of hands on. Okay, so let us just move towards. Uh, can you open Windows Security Registry? The first option open Windows Security. Okay, so here we have four options as we can see right now. So let us first discuss the first four, then we'll move on to the next. So account protection, which is not needed, why? Because Windows pin has been set, it means the system is using Windows Hello, but it has a fa password. Firewall and network protection, why is it safe? Because it has been turned to uh, 
a public network i guess not a private what happens is between a public and a private network when you select a public network it means that the system will isolate you from the network it means what happens in homes you click on cast button from your phone it automatically opens up uh, the application in your smart tv right you try to shift the file from one pc to another you just click on airdrop and it goes from one p one place to the another why because your devices are connected uh, interconnected right oh my video is off till now okay so why is it why is happen why it happens because the devices are not isolated from the network so when we select private it means you are connected to the network the it means the system knows that this wifi needs not much security because only the family people or the private networks are connected so that time your system is open to all the incoming and outgoing networks within the range i mean within that specific local area network or a wireless area network when we set it to public what happens your device your device stops responding to any other um, packets which is coming in or they do not send away packets to the network easily for being transferred from one pc to another that makes the pc more secure so public is more secure using a public mode where uh, how, if you're in a home or if you if you're outside public mode is always secure now it shows that app and browsing uh, browser control uh, th there is a yellow mark why is this so because here there are two things one is microsoft if you if since all are using windows 10 for the moment you might be knowing about windows microsoft x microsoft edge application guard i guess Shreshti, is it installed for you microsoft edge application guard can we just click on turn on for a checkup now click on uh, microsoft edge or, or we click on app on browser control okay see okay this is the microsoft defender application guard which gets added to microsoft edge so see if you see here here are three options this is reputation based protection team have you checked this out before in your pcs to check that what are the features of previously available so that you can design your own previously and allow uh, your specific filters and networks to come in let's go to ones so this is one of the best thing that isolated browser when we install this application microsoft uh, as a um, you know firewall which is designed to run with your microsoft edge which you know creates sandbox for you for example if you're downloading a file by mistake even it will be there within that browser sandbox i believe it is there in all the windows 10 systems over the uh, windows version 1909 so this helps you to make sure that if by chance if you're downloading a file and then you are unable to you know handle the consequences it will be keeping that in the sandbox you close the application by not permitting them to enter your hard drive it will not i mean you don't need an antivirus if you're using this microsoft defender application card this will completely secure your system completely provide a sandbox and let nothing to enter without your permission now if you're sure enough that you want to pass this out you'll be definitely clicking on that and then only the application will come in so unless you allow, it will not let a virus, a single virus to bypass it. Not just about a virus, virus is also a program. It will not allow a single bit of data to be transferred from this browsing environment to your PC environment. And it just go a step back. And device security. Okay, so here are three options we see, core isolation, security processor, and secure boot. So most of us are using Windows 10 right now, right? Windows 10 or Windows 11? Windows 10. Windows 10, okay. So if you have, Windows 10 has a faster boot, right? It means if you shut down your system, you see your uh, screen off within the next two or three seconds, and then your system off within the next 10 seconds, right? And when you turn on your screen, if you're having a good processor, it should turn on within 6 to 15 seconds, right? Yes, sir. So, you know, why is it so? I mean, why your system is running so fast? And why the earlier version of um, Microsoft releases, they do not like Windows 7 or Windows 8? Have you tried to think about it? Okay, I'll take it as a no, no problem. Windows 10 has a feature. Uh, have you ever heard of Superfetch? Superfetch services in Windows. Should you open services once?
so the, this is a panel which has the services of windows whatever happens in your windows it is from here so each and every service which you see running in this list has some or another thing to play with your uh, windows suppose for example um, windows update maybe so you can type it selecting one see windows update windows sign at the top we can see windows event windows installer so whatever things which happens in your pc is from here so once we know all the services properly it will automatic i mean you will be uh, be you will be the master of your system like what we generally do once we have a problem in our system we clean install the system we never try to repair that is the problem right now with us but but yes, if we know this, we can repair it. Now, I was talking about Superfetch. Superfetch technology in Windows, if you, if you can also start searching in Google as well. Superfetch is an intelligent AI program of Microsoft, which helps your device understand which application you use the most in your system while uh, you operate. Again, I'll tell you, for example, I'm opening my Windows and I just dive into the Microsoft Edge. So the first thing which I use after opening my PC is Microsoft Edge with WhatsApp, with Messenger, or with different other applications. So Windows will be triggering those and keeping that in mind that no, this user will be using this application after they open the PC. Now, whenever you turn off the PC, you will see that turning off the PC just turns the light of the screen off and then it shuts down within the next 10 seconds. Your CPU light will be still on, your fan in the PC if you have it will be on. All Intel and AMD processors will have a fan. So what it is doing, it is saving those applications in your RAM memory. Team, uh, is RAM volatile or non-volatile memory? RAM is a volatile memory. So, what do we know about volatile memories? I mean, what are the actions of it? Sir, uh, volatile memory is uh, it just uh, yeah uh, after sub shutdown it just uh, it can't hold the uh, data. After uh, shutdown, uh, it after the RAM off, it can't uh, hold the data. That, that that's why RAM called the volatile memory. Okay, can you give me an example of a volatile memory? So actually, uh, I know the RAM is uh, the volatile memory. I can't know the uh, volatile uh, memory. Okay. Can you give me an example of a non-volatile memory? It's our hard disk, sir. It is a hard disk. Can you give me another example of a non-volatile memory? Pen drive or, uh, or mobile uh, memory. That's, uh, the okay and what we know about uh this is these all good cool now what happens is whenever sir, we, yep the volatile memory what are quickly contain karta hai data go but jab power interrupt hota hai to quickly lost we kar deta hai Okay. Is it right? You are right. But whenever a question is asked to you in a work, uh, I mean, in a workshop or in an online meet, if you do not answer within the first 10 seconds, try not to answer. Okay, uh, that's my mistake. But uh, if so that I is my mistake. We yeah, try to search in Google. Yeah, no, that no, that's thing. not I searched. I just. Uh, and yeah, I, he's an answering. That's why, because I, one of the time. I've been interviewed, that's why I remember it. Cool, good. That that's interview, good. he asked me about what is volatile and what is RAM and all that. That's why I've remembered that, all that part. Okay, so now we know about volatile and non-volatile memory. Now tell me one thing, so Superfetch through the application of uh, the, the application which you use generally in a memory of your PC before it shuts down so that it can have a fast backup in Windows, right? So tell me where will it store the application in a volatile memory or in a non-volatile memory? Again, the question is 
if I'm trying to use my Windows 10 with a fast startup settings on, it will shut down faster, saving the files for the next boot up, and it will even start up faster so that it does not need to load all the files which I use. So tell me, where will the files be stored? In a volatile memory or in a non-volatile memory? Volatile memory. Volatile memory, OK, one answer I got. But still start with the research because this needs Google. See it and tell me. Pintu says in a cache, sir. OK. Go ahead, any more answers? Provided I'm shutting down my system, I'll shut down my system. I am not having a battery, so it's completely powered off. So where will the data be stored? Take two minutes and reply your answers. Everyone, try to participate, team. This will be, you know, throughout the engineering or throughout the life, this will be needed. These are the things. It's cache memory, okay, from Shuham Kumar. It will be on volatile. Only two, three people participating. Any more answers? No more answers. By research, it is uh, non volatile. Maybe type your answer if you wish. Okay, cache work on as a hibernate. Okay, when the PC is hibernated, the cache works. Cool. Non volatile storage is a physical media that retains data without electric power. That means no data is lost when the company is powered off, making hard disk suitable for permanent storage of information. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what's the? Uh, I mean, whether it's RAM or a, a, a hard drive or SSDs. Just an answer. Finally, what can we come up to a conclusion for the moment? It's a RAM or a hard drive where it stores. Hard when disk. Sorry, hard disk. Okay, hard disk. Any more answers? Pin to set cache. Now, team, let me tell you. This is a very good thing that you all participate. At least you try to search for this. And this is a very important topic. Whenever we operate on Windows, right? And there is a, a fast startup option in a build, your PC never shuts down. It will keep things stored in the RAM only. So fast shutdown, it means your system is actually entering a phase of hibernation, but not an actual hibernation. It will turn down all the data which is there in your RAM and put the data which is required for the startup of the application inside your RAM only. So a fast shutdown, it means, I mean, you're shutting down your Windows 10, keeping the fast uh, startup section on, which means that it will not shut down actually. It will keep your PC in a hibernated form, but you are shutting down your PC from your end. You're getting my point, team. 
if you restart your windows 10 laptops it will take a long time why because it is shutting down completely and it is starting up completely that is why we say that we often we should perform restart at least once a week because restart means it fixes all the damages it fixes all the files in your pc which are not running well however shutdown when 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 the fast startup option is on the shutdown is not actually shutting down your pc however it's only hibernating your pc so it is stored on the ram understood team you can even type if you're shy to talk okay i guess you understood now talking this is this was the part of super fetch now super fetch technology previously when we used that it was available in the services as a function which can be altered you can turn it on or you can turn it off however uh, after 1909 version it has been taken away by a different name which will be your homework to find it out what is the name of that current application uh, or the service running in here in the in the box which we can see uh, which will trigger the things which we generally use it use the most in windows now i believe um, if if we close uh, just a moment let me check whatever i can see on the screen okay like uh, if i see the one two three fourth icon i can see it at teams a new application in windows 10 which always runs in the background it acts as a quick connect so if you click on teams for a second let us see the speed it opens on an 11 gen processor so it opened instantly since it's not been used before it's showing get started compared to which if i try to open outlook right now the left hand side of word let us see how much time it takes to open provided both are heavy, both are heavy applications so now did you understand the difference between the two that why one opens so fast and why one, uh, why the other opens slowly you're getting the point yes sir you the both 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 the applications ran on the same processor both the applications almost have the same bandwidth to open bandwidth in the sense the cpu bandwidth if you always you know uh, if if you have a craze over computers you should always open your task manager should she just open it and uh, keep it on top In performance view at the top view option no options always on top double click on cpu and keep it on the right hand side so if you keep this on the right hand side and use your pc daily you will understand that which application is take, consuming how much amount of your cpu and memory while it is being used so this way you'll know that what your pc is capable of which file is good to run and why you face blue screen errors and since we are talking about forensics today cyber forensics this is the way you can keep a track that uh, you can also see this right dig zero c drive it's showing ssd zero percent of usage so from here you'll be able to see that how much disk capacity are you using per application or uh, how much write and read and write is going on in the background so this way if you monitor this every day over a year after a year, you can calculate that this is the total amount of data which has been transferred from your system so i did not shut down my laptop since um, I forgot, uh, maybe maybe two days by now. So let me show by sharing my screen that what is the disk utility and the space I, ca I could record till now. Trishik, uh, can I take over? Sir, mm -hmm. uh, sir, uh, when, uh, uh, sir, when I will uh, go to service and then uh, like, um, then always turn off uh, Windows update. Then, sir, automatically he will sir, turn on. You want to turn on your Windows update? No, no, I have, uh, I will turn uh, turn off, sir. Or mm -hmm. then I think, uh, I think, sir, turn off of Windows update. You no, cannot turn, turn off your Windows update in Windows. Can you? But why, sir? I but, mean, uh, is there any way we can turn off Windows update in Windows? I'm asking. I do not know. 
yes sir yes sir in the in that way it will uh, give uh, give out I mean, tell me the tell me the entire way i mean where do we take from how and then when will do job data firstly uh, sir uh, go on window service then click on window job data then click on right uh, right click on properties then uh, give option uh, window job data and manual automatic and disable disable okay yes. good so you know the procedure yes so now yes, you tell sir. me what is the question is yes sir can you tell me again sir can you tell me what what is your question so my question is when sir uh, when sir uh, disable my window job date then automatically uh, turn on after 5 to 10 days 10 to 12 days no it will not automatically turn on when you operate yes, sir, yes sir turn on sir i i give a problem uh, approximately 5 to 6 months sir. no it will never turn on if your window is genuine yes sir it should not my on. window is genuine sir because no. my laptop is dos your laptop is when you bought your laptop your laptop was dos right yeah 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 sir did you spend 10000 on buying any windows 10 uh, yeah 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 sir 10 pro sir professional so you spent 14000 to buy any windows no sir i couldn't buy but your uh, windows is not genuine I, I have shared the code right wmic path software licensing service yes page. sir yesterday i will click on but sir wmic something get a some get a error sir so it means no. your laptop is not genuine okay let us see shreshi share your screen once i'm typing it just copy paste V3X original product key. Check my spellings and copy paste it. Three, three. Yes, sir. Just a second. Can I will do it. Let us check. So if you're right clicking and pasting it here. Enter. Sir, it is OAT. It means you do not have, uh, you can also share your screen after Shreya Shri does. So if you're happy, yes, if you have it, it will show like this. Uh, Shreshri case is not sensitive. Mm, there is a spelling mistake. Upper room. WMIC, PATH patch, software. SOFT, software spelling is wrong. Sorry. You cannot click there, you know it. Software licensing services get no brand. Again, spelling wrong somewhere. L A C E N S I N G A C R P I C E S. Okay, services. Remove the S. Now again, presenter. So, if your Windows is genuine, this code should return with this value. So, Shreshi, can you copy it and give it in the chat? Because the one which I typed in, hurry. No, 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 not this one. Uh, yeah. So try this in your system. If you do not get, uh, if you do not get a return of your product key with this uh, piece of command, then your system is not uh, genuine. And on a non-genuine system, anything can happen at any point of time. Now let me share my screen. Yes, sir. So. Trash is missing visible. Sir, can I share my screen, sir? Okay, go ahead, no problem. Share your screen. Sir, 
team, you need a lot of hands on. Sir, uh, can you send me again, sir? Mm -hmm. Sure. And it is right, sir. Yes, it is right. So, you yes. is not genuine. You have used any of these softwares to uh, make your system activated. I need to activate your system. So that is why anything can happen in your PC. Your Windows update can, your services can turn on off anytime according to the um, software's will which you have used. It can be KMS Pico, it can be a Microsoft Toolkit, it can be a DAZ application, anything. DAZ. We have used some of the applications. Yes, sir. Then how, how can you, how, why do you tell your system is genuine? I don't understand, sir. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen to just check a text analysis. Mm. So do you know how many how many years a processor can last of a full usage or a hard disk can last for a full usage? This is my activity monitor. Let me go to the disk. So within the last two days, my computer has read a data over one TB. It is just the reading. So one TB data has been read. Data written is 517 GB. And this is the speed of data for the moment. So based on the network, 44 GB, 44.9, almost 45 GB of data has been used over the last two days. 10 GB of data has been sent. This is right currently the um, total, you know, speed which is being used by the Google Meet. So from here, what you can do is what I always do. I have a sheet maintained here just in just beside below my keyboard. Before shutting down my PC, I note down the data read, data written, and the total. So I calculate how much is the writing uh, going on in my PC. So this is where you can try to calculate automatically how much data has been written, or uh, I mean data transfer rate, the total amount of data transferred, and how you uh, means when can you expect a um, bad sector in your device to be found? Getting my point, team. If if you uh, hear about, I mean, if you read about this more, then you'll get to know that around a processor lasts around maybe eight to nine years of a complete usage, twenty four seven. So similarly, for the disk which you're using, they will be having their certain time period. So this way you can calculate, and this uh, there are a lot more, you know, calculations. You will be getting to know more in the operating system subject when you'll be having it. But yeah. So if you have any questions, do let me know. But team, you need a lot of hands-on. You, you need to have a lot of practices. Because unless you know your system, cybersecurity or ethical hacking or anything which you do in your system will be a problem for you. I mean, you will be stuck there only where, whenever you'll try to install an application if you cannot install it. Getting my point, team? So start st spending time with your devices. Any more questions, team? Sir? Yes, Rishab? Can I share my screen and can you tell me, is it uh, active or uh, what uh, in my... Oh, no, I will not tell you anything. You can just see if you can see your... Uh, you last day, maybe you shared your screen and it shows that activate windows. No, your system is not genuine. If you do not see a 5 cross 5 
product ID or a product pin, your system is not genuine. Getting my point? Yes, sir. So team, let us know if you have any other questions. Uh, sir, uh, I have one question, sir, regarding for the, uh, sir, a uh, hot spot. Hot spot, okay. Uh, sir, uh, I think, uh, sir, uh, if I, I feel you, uh, sir, someone hot spot. Then, mm -hmm. sir, he oh. know my, yeah, yeah, sir, he, he know my file, then he will uh, remove my file and get, get back in my file. Sir, how it will work and then this is so uh, isolation, just now as i said that while Tracy was sharing the screen if you are keeping your network as public it means that your network is isolated your pc enters into a network isolation mode where you are not allowed your pc is not allowed to communicate with any other pcs no one can come in no one can go out but if you are keeping your uh, settings to private in your computer then it means that uh, you are open to access so sir, can you, sir, can you give a practical, sir? Mm -hmm. sir you are on Windows. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Sir. Is she can hear me? I cannot hear you. Please share your screen. You want me to share your screen? Yeah, the screen and open network settings in Windows. It seems she's also sleeping with everyone. No, no, I thought you asked when to share the screen. No. <laughs> okay, let us go to the settings. Let us go to network and internet. Let us go to wireless Wi-Fi. Let us go to Shreshi properties. Now, can you see here public and private options? Public is always recommended. It shows that your device is not disclosed on the network. Use this in most cases. We connect to a network at home, work, or in public place or private place. Your device is discoverable to the network. If you select this, uh, if you need file sharing or use application to communicate over the network, you should know and trust the people and the devices on the network. Understood. So public. Yes, sir. I think, sir, uh, if I, if I will click on sir network section, then he uh, he he will get a error. So uh, network dis network discovery is turned off. Network computer and device are not visible. Please turn on network discovery. Then network and sharing in center. You are talking about network and sharing center in Windows 10 control panel, right? On yeah, 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 sir, yeah sir. Uh, Windows Explorer. Yes, you're right. Double clicking on that, you're using a broadband connection with a wire, right? Yes, sir. That yes, sir. Right. yes, sir. So that when you click on there in the left hand side with your network uh, sharing turned on, you will see all the PCs who are connected with your local area network from the same box from your local ISP, right? Yes, you sir. If your if your neighbor is XYZ, you will see XYZ, XYZ media PC, XYZ library, XYZ videos. You see it like that, right? Uh, sir, can you show, show me that one practical sir like uh, how to it will access in uh, we both are we both are on uh, private networks we both are running on uh, VPN so we can mm -hmm. enter into the network and sharing center but you'll see nothing there I will every time try sir, uh, I, will, I will give a question on sir YouTube but uh, <laughs> not to give an answer sir how, how it will work how to connect sir like how this to okay yeah, in another, sir, uh, in other, another, sir, another computer. In another computer, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah, with only for a hotspot. Only by the hotspot. Yeah, yes. Yeah, um, okay, Shreshri, can you type remote desktop in your start button? Enter. Open show options. Okay, so first of all, you'll open this page on this device you want to connect to the computer okay yes this sir. is the device you're trying to connect from cool yes sir now please type remote desktop in the settings page Shreshri. in the back it's there click on remote desktop settings this we will be doing on the computer we are trying to connect we'll turn this on 
Yes, sir. Should I should turn it on? Confirm. See, we can see. Oh, can you turn it off and you can? Uh, can you show us the? Uh, this confirm. Again, turn it on. See, we can see an option here as you and users selected under user account settings will be able to connect to this PC remotely. It means we are enabling this PC to be connected remotely over the same over the local area access network. Okay, so click yes, on sir. confirm. Yes, now sir. it is ready. So the port of your device is three three eight nine, which is already done. Yes. Uh, so Shashi, copy the PC name. Copy the PC name from the settings. So you will be copying this. Go to the remote desktop protocol and paste it. Now when we click on connect, it will connect it. Getting my point? Oh. Yes, sir. Since, sorry. Now, since this is the same PC, uh, you'll not be able to connect for the moment. Understood? Yes, sir. But, sir, uh, sir, one of my friend, he will do, sir, in phone. If I will connect in their network in my phone, then he will, sir, now my empty file, then how it will, sir? My oh, file, sir, my. Can you open your edge? Only for. I will connect on hotspot, then he will do everything in my file. Uh, click on the plus icon, a new tab. Type open Google Play Store. Google Play Store. Enter. Click on Google Play Store. First option. And type remote uh, RD client. Maybe. Enter. So download the first app, Remote Desktop Microsoft Corporation. Download this in your phone and do the same thing from your phone and it will be the same process. So this application so shows installed. So it's already there in Shreshi's phone. Understood? So from your uh, yes, phone, sir, yes, sir. you can see whatever you see on the screenshot. Shreshi, click on the second screenshot. So yeah, you can access this from your phone. Clear? How do we connect it in network? So this is only possible when we are connecting on the same network. It means either we are connected on the same LAN, either or we are connected on the same um, network. What do we call it? Wi-Fi. Yes, sir. This is not possible whenever we are on. We are. I am in college and you are at home. This is not possible using this process. However, there are other processes to make it done. Understood. Well, yes, yes. Sir. He will only work sir on, on my private network, like uh, my hotspot, my personal hotspot. Not okay. he will work on sir broadband. It will not work, sir. Okay. So, any more questions, team? No, no sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. If it's not even cyber security or ethical hacking, any questions do you have on anything you want to talk about, team? Sir, how to know Wi-Fi password? How to know a Wi-Fi password? Okay. Yes. To know a Wi-Fi password, easily. CMD. Yes, sir. With CMD. With CMD. If you ask a question, have patience first to hear the answer from me. Then ask the question. Cool. Okay. Yes, uh, CMD is a command prompt I told you last day. So. CMD only a CMD. If you're asking which command in CMD, no, you cannot do it by a CMD. It can be done, but you need to install an application called Metasploit for Windows, maybe. But that's not the recommended way. Download and install Kali Linux. You will be having the guide. Let me show you. It's a good thing if you have. Asked. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I will do it, sir, on Kali Linux. But sir, I will not know, sir. I'm showing you. For good knowledge, for uh, good knowledge for Kali Linux, then sir, no, I. I couldn't do it, sir. Okay, let's do a thing. Since you want to know this, I will be giving you the complete piece of code to write it. Okay, from here you will be down. You can download and install Kali Linux, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, right, sir. You can download and install Kali Linux. So what I am doing is I am typing you the code which you need to do, and then you will be able to do it, right? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I am typing it in the Google uh, Google Chat. Will that be okay with all? Yes, sir. 
you can like note this in a file and then share it with your friends later on because this chat will be vanished. Okay, sir. Okay. So, Shreshri, how do we uh, find the properties of a wireless network in Kali Linux? This is a question we use straight away. I have haven't used Linux since last one point five years. I forgot everything. This was not an expected and very bad bad answer. So we use this to open. Um, yeah, please enter. Enter. So this command gives us. Uh, let's uh, see uh, all the you know installed drivers of our system about the wireless configuration. So you can try writing IP config in your Windows. In the end, you'll find the same. Now we will be using a package which is pre-installed. That is A I R M O N dash N G. Airmo N G. Spelling wrong. You you'll just type the command as I'm writing in uh, in here in your uh, Linux terminal. That will work. Okay. What does air mon uh, ng does? By the name, it suggests air monitoring. So it will show you the SSIDs, the ESSIDs, and the BSSIDs of all the devices running in your network and which channel is it running on. If I would have known that you all are interested in Kali, I would have installed it last night. Okay, no problem. So you will be writing code in the terminal air mon ng. So you will be having a complete details about all the devices which are running. Cool. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, it will work on sir VMware. It will it it will work anywhere. It will work anywhere you run it. So now what we need to do is we need to find out that what are the applications which are already using your wireless driver. Remember, if you're trying to fire someone, you need to make sure that you do not get caught. I mean, a backfire, right? So yes, you need to check that what are the applications who I mean with. What is the application who are using your wireless LAN? So what we will do, we will try to start the LAN. How do we do this? We write A I R M O N. Spelling is correct. Air mon dash n g. Case is sensitive. Always keep everything in small. Do not give anything in caps. Cool. I have written the first, the last one wrong. Start W LAN zero. So I am writing W LAN zero for the moment because my uh, most of the PCs have W LAN zero. My LAN is P S five three one. So I will write airmon ng start my um, name of my WLAN. Okay, it can change from PC yes, to PC. Once we write this, you will be finding that these are the application lists which are using your applications. So you will write like this: airmon dash ng. Then check kill. This will kill the applications who are using your wireless network. This will immediately shut your Wi-Fi down of your system. It means you cannot connect to the network. Only you can see the available networks in your system. Correct? Yes, sir. Now what we do? We again try to run it. So we started the uh, WLAN. We check kill the application we, who are using our softwares, and now we will try to run it. How do we run it? We use an app. We use another function called A I R O D U M P. I might be wrong in the spelling. Dash ng wlan zero mon wlan zero mon spelling is correct here. Yeah. So what this does? This will now display the channels, the packets, the PWR, the status, the SSIDs, BSSIDs, their encryption types, which is the latest. Uh, uh, I mean, encryption going on in the market right now. For wireless networks, or which is the latest technology of Wi-Fi right now, team? Wi-Fi six. Wi-Fi six, and what Wi-Fi six uses? I think so. He will provide a three point four gigahertz sir as a terminal network. Three point four gigahertz. Yes, sir. What is that now? So normally, uh, Wi-Fi provides a two point four gigahertz. So two point four and five gigahertz is provided by Wi-Fi five as well. Yes, sir. Three, I think, sir, Wi-Fi six is sir three point four at either three point five. So I, I will not confirm it. Sir. No. Okay. So the concept is we use uh, if if you try to connect to a PC, you see eight zero one dot one one AC BGN, right? We see AC slash B slash G slash N, right? 
Yes, sir. So AC represents it means that you are in Wi-Fi five. AX represent it means you are in Wi-Fi six. So maximum trans uh, transfer speed can be up to eight hundred Mbps, uh, which can differ uh, if you are having a. Do you know what is a memo? A single memo, a double memo, a triple memo, a four by four memo, MIMO. Multiple input, multiple output. Sir, I know, but sir, not a. Sir, I will confuse, sir. Okay. Okay. So one thing uh, it's, it's a prerequisite for everyone since in the last to last PPT, you have seen that networking is most important while you operate. I mean, while you try to learn a cybersecurity or ethical hacking or any other thing, you need to know the basics of networking, a proper definition of each and every layers of the OSI model each and everything. Pro so that you just know and figure it out whatever you're doing. If I'm asking you a question that uh, talking about DOS, so your college website has been attacked on DOS. If a question asks you that on which, TCP layer or on, on which layer of the OSI model is being affected by the DOS, you should be you should tell it easily by understanding that what's exactly happening, which layer can be affected, why is it affected, is it having a problem in the data transfer rate, everything. Getting my point. Also, just yes, not yes, one networking, you have to know a complete, you need to know proper operating system, a proper concept of data structure, and many more. Okay, no problem. So let us go on from here. So where were we? We were on AIRO dump in G. Okay. So when we write MON, you can see I have written MON, right? So when you're trying it on your own system, we write it MON. When you're trying it on the other system, we do not write MON. You need to understanding when you uh, try practic practicing it. Now comes the most important part. What will I write it? A I R O D U M P dash N D. You can also see why I type right. Yes, sir. Okay, A I R O D U M P. Aero dump N G. Then we type it as minus C. This minus C here represents as the channel. You can see, right? So suppose if you see from the list on your screen that my Wi-Fi is running on channel maybe 10. Can you tell me how many channels are there in uh, where is my pointer? How many channels are there uh, in 2.4 gigahertz? Four, sir. What? Four channels, sir. Any other answer? Team, you all use Wi Fi in your homes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everyone now asking everyone, you, you use Wi Fi in your home, right? Yes, sir. So, how many channels are there in a 2.4 gigahertz router? Sir, I think eight, sir. Going to you stop for two minutes. Anyone? Sir, I once noticed in my Wi Fi that, that uh, eight to ten channels are there, sir. There are 14 channels in 2.4 gigahertz. Whereas we are only allowed and uh, have access to use the 13 till 13 channel. The first channel being the strongest channel and the 11th channel being the most, uh, the 1, 6 and 11, they are the most suitable channels to use because they do not overlap with each other. Means if you are drawing the channels as 1, 2, 3, 4 and we, you know, draw a circle over it, we then try to figure out that which is the most uh, tangle free channel. Means suppose if we are having, we, are, we live in metropolitan city, so each and every home has a Wi Fi to make sure that we boost up the speed of the Wi Fi, we adjust the channel accordingly. So, one based on, uh, I mean, based on primary circumstances, the 1, 6, and 11 are the most used channels. Uh, uh, whereas uh, on a 20 gigahertz frequency, and if you're using, if you want to go for a higher speed and a higher range, keep, uh, we can keep 40 or 80 frequent, 40 frequency in 2.54 gigahertz and 80 frequency in 5 gigahertz uh, on a channel of 11 in uh, 10 in 2.4 gigahertz and a channel 48 in 5 gigahertz. Today only log into your routers. Uh, by typing 192, 192.168.0.1, this is your login address. Your password will be admin and admin. ID and password will be admin and admin. Try to check each and every settings, the DHCP settings, the DNA settings, the IP settings. Learn the usage. You'll see that in your router. Sir, send me inside chat support, sir. In call message, sir. Uh, it will be written just below your router. 
you turn your router in the back side, it will be written 192.168.0.1. For geo routers, it will be 192.168.1.1. Then the login password will be geocentral, and the password is admin at the red one two three four five. For dealing routers, you need to type 192.168.0.1. The admin and password will be kept blank. For Netgear routers, a capital admin, a capital uh, password, uh, a capital admin as a password. So today, go back home. Once your classes are finished, open your router, try to know your system properly, and then proceed with it. So Pint, you're not yet ready for uh, performing a Wi-Fi hack. However, still, since you want it, I will be giving you the code. So air dump ng minus Siemens. We are writing the name of the channel here. After yes, writing sir. the name of the channel, we'll type minus B. This minus B represents the BSS ID. So let me not write 10, you'll forget. There will be a CNN EL number. If there is a spelling mistake, do take care of it. I often make mistakes. The means go through the library of uh, this application. You will be getting to know it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Cool. So minus B means the BSS ID. B BSS ID. So there are difference between BSS IDs and ESS IDs. So that is the that is the station ID and the display name of the uh, network which you are seeing. So here, if you see at the top, my network's name is Speed Two, Speed Five. These are two of my networks, right? Speed Two and Speed Five. So these are my ESS IDs, and their corresponding MAC addresses are my BSS IDs or vice versa, check it out. Search, copy this and search in the internet, you'll be getting everything. So now what we will do here is we will be pasting the BSS ID here in place of this BSS ID without this open and close symbols. All right team, till, much, till this much it's clear or not? Yes sir. Now we will write since we are operating on another machine, WLAN zero. Sir, it will work or only for sir, Linux now sir? It will work on all distributions which are running, uh, which will be running. Now I am forgetting for you. Oh, sir. <laughs> uh, RPM or Debian based systems? RPM or Debian based? What? How many? How many types of Linux do we see around Pin Two? Sir, three types, sir. What are the three types? Uh Sir, Linux, Kali Linux, and Pirate OS. These are the operating system names. We see uh, RPM based and we see a Debian based. Okay. Sir, so, uh, please define it, sir. I uh, couldn't understand. The internet. You do, uh, I mean, all of you, I, I'm not complaining about you, but you do a very less homework. You always, you should always, you know, take a pen and paper set, write the terms, and then go to the Google, write the definitions. By the definition, you understand. Draw some small uh, diagram so that if you see it after a year, also you can recall it from it. Take short notes. You should do this, and you have very less hands-on. Though it's fine, not a problem, but you'll be needing it. So till now, we have already acquired. Uh, the by, by this erodum command we will be acquiring the list of users who are using this wi-fi or bss id means if i am applying this code over my channel in this speed where am i in this speed to network it will show that how many devices are connected in this speed to network in my home so it will show my phone desktop laptop tv etc and so on right once it is done what will we do we will select the network we need to fire on right so which network you want to take, which uh, SSID you want to take down or whether you want to take down the entire complete system to gain the password of the system. So we are slowly losing the authentication of one device and trying to be a part of that, showing the network that I am itself, I am the same device by exchanging handshake, by, 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 by performing a handshake. So what we'll do, we'll run the same thing. And it's my screen team, A-I-R-O-D-U-M-P dash N-G minus C. We give the 
create a new channel number then we will be giving and then we will be creating a new folder as suppose soumya1 this is the name of the folder I, I i hope you know this that in linux if you are creating a folder you will not be you will not need to give an extension it can execute any type of file right if you are giving just a, if you if you are giving a file as uh, hack dot soumya show mode this will open the file automatically without an error correct getting my point yes sir then but sir uh, can you show me a practical sir because i am confused i am giving you the codes yes yes sir, yes, sir you give me yeah, i understand cool i will be installing kali linux and i will be showing you that that will not okay. be possible today but in the last you? in the last webinar sir please show me if i will do that uh, if i will do that sir in okay then but you need to go through a lot of settings you need to learn a lot of terms before you start it because right now if you do you you will be mugging up the codes and you will be doing it without knowing what you are doing then you will paste here the mac address right once this is done what will we do you will be writing the network on which you are working on it will be wlan0 if you're doing it on your own pc then you'll write this mon if you're not doing it in your own pc you'll not write the mon cool understood this is done now okay now you will be activating a crunch after running an airplay here starts the authentication line so we are running the airplay ng minus 0 signifies the number of time i want to run this the authentication on the device so if i'm typing 12 it will go for 12 seconds if i type 0 here it will go for infinite right infinite stage so i'm typing minus a this is the authentication type getting my point team so suppose if i'm writing minus a it means that it is using an aes network if i'm using if i'm typing minus w it means it's using wpa2 or wpa3 right authentication type once this is done what we can do is we can again write the bss id here and then we can write minus um then we can write uh, wln0 mon and now finally we'll run crunch so crunch is a tool which we use to generally crack a password you will need to make or prepare you, you can write program right so using a library you can download a library or i or i'll always prefer you to generate your own words a combination like if you want to make a combination of eight words so your first word will be eight times a like a a a a a, a. then it will be a a a a a a b then it will be a a a a a c like this all the combinations will come right so my name will also in come in there show me the right getting my point team yes sir a combination in which all the words in the words in the world will be coming in without the special characters so just try with the words first theek hai it will be a file of at least 5 to 10 gb of size not a problem once it is done we will be using that file only using a uh, this command a r e p l a y airplay ng minus 0 then the channel number c h n n c h n n e channel number paste here let me give it like this and here we have selected the channel number and then what can we do we can give again the authentication type we can keep this double and zero double and zero one percent now crunch it finally c r u n c h crunch to give the time you want to do it to give the channel name suppose if it is 10 then you give the name of the file suppose this is the name of the file you give a pipe roll then you type a i r c r a c k air crack and the air crack is the name of the package minus b for the b s s i d the package is available on sir uh, linux yep yeah i will pre install oh, sir i yeah i will install it yeah and then give a name of the file suppose the name of the file is s o u m y a show mo dot c a p cap so by now this will start your process it will take some time and once it is done you will be having uh, the entire set of the password in this file showmo.cap 
it will take a long time provided nobody shuts down the laptop or nobody shuts down the wi-fi in your system if you see that you will be having something called renew lease right if you have entered your uh, router settings then you will be seeing that lease time is this much hours so you can click on renew lease right so the laptop should not lose its lease while it's running this understood yes sir so this is it you can let me know if you have any other questions but team again you need a lot of hands-on before you try these all things because right now you will just write the codes without understanding what we are exactly doing you're getting my point yes sir so before this you need a lot of knowledge on networking lot of knowledge about your own system which you're using and some basic concepts of linux of how to use it how to browse between files some terminal codings and possibly shell scripting as well that will be needed anything else team what happened sir can you tell me again anything else you want to ask or shall we close the session no sir uh sir, i will ask in the next next session sir okay sir, I... this is our last session for the day for this whole workshop today was the third and final workshop dear students and participants if you have anything to ask to our uh, speakers our honorable speakers please ask to them because this is the last day we're spending with them in this session and this is the last session we have to open a new session from fourth and fifth with new topic with new honorable speakers have you anything to ask I hope so. There is no question from the sir, participant side. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir, how it will sir work on sir? Uh, sir, how it will work Linux, sir? Means I didn't get you. Sir, Linux, sir, which platform works? Uh, sir, which platform will work sir, on Linux, sir? Uh, you can ask in your own language if you wish because I'm not getting your question. You can ask. Sir, Linux, sir, कैसे मतलब कैसे work करता है सर? जैसे Windows क्या है कि Microsoft से ये करके करता है सर? Linux का सर कैसा है? जैसे जैसे Microsoft Windows काम करते हैं वैसे Linux काम करता है. You click on icons, it opens. You click on file manager, it opens. The same way. Just the difference is the executive files in Windows .exe .msi .dll they work. In Linux .dpkg dot deb dot tar dot gz so the extensions are different both the operating systems one is uh and one is from microsoft and the other is uh, one is windows based and other is linux based in linux so we have to with two types one is db and one is the um again i forgot but extensions are different yeah code are not same like if you are working on cmd like we type uh, ip config in cmd so in linux we type ip config so there is a little difference while operating in linux but how more or less the same but when you enter into some high definition work there is a lot of difference and people will be always preferring linux more for rd research and development than windows pc Any questions? Thank you, sir. Okay, and before I remember you telling different names of operating systems like Kali, Parrot. So these are all uh, Debian-based Linux operating systems. These are not types of Linux. Now, uh, which is the Linux operating system uh, which is being used in your college? 
means the operating system which are linux yeah linux i believe which one this is same for all colleges because preference are uh, preference are the same everyone uses ubuntu right yes you need hands on people you need to try i mean you, you have a lot of query in your mind you want to learn so yes sir. Always, i mean start doing hands on the system download is download linux download kali read some books of networking try to jot down your points which you want to learn then you have the biggest library google right you have the complete internet yes right. sir. yes sir kali linux i will have to come to prefer kali linux you see you are not understanding what i am telling it doesn't matter what you prefer now because till now you are not yet i mean we are not ready to use kali linux unless we have the knowledge of everything so first let us learn from there uh, learn whatever we need to then prefer because if i ask you why do you prefer kali linux you will not be able to answer me right yes sir yes sir right, because you do not know what is the difference between ubuntu and the kali linux both are same, both are the same thing they have the same system files they just have a different name so you still do not know the difference so do not jump into preferences jump into conclusions start doing hands on in lockdown people have to do a lot i mean all online classes no practicals so we are like we cannot blame anyone we cannot blame our colleges because everything was online but it was our it is always our responsibility at the end to utilize the time back at home because people if they want in lockdown times they can learn a lot it saves your time of traveling it saves your time of going out you can just sit back home and learn after after we after it it's hard first thing it's hard to get a job second thing it's after you get a job it hard it is very hard to keep a job so on that basis you should try level best online examinations it's easy sometimes it's easy for people because i have seen my friends i'm telling you also it's a recorded session doesn't matter i am sharing this with you my friends we we bought a camera we bought a web camera my friend is sitting in front of the web camera turned back back side and i am sitting in front of the system giving their exams for persistence i'm writing the piece of code for him laptop is turned towards me the camera is turned towards him so this is the way people give exams in lockdown and they get selected but it will become a lot harder to um, lot harder for people you know to keep the job that time i am sharing a code i, I am sharing an experience of what was the question which i answered for that for for that friend of mine the question was like this think properly it was said that a man needs to jump a wall provided the man can only jump 9 meters at a single try the size of the wall will be given as multiple inputs by the user every time the man jumps the man sinks down by 1 meter it means if i am not able to cross the wall by in first jump i will be sinked inside by minus 1 and the height of the wall is given by the user so how many attempts are needed to cover all the number of walls given by the user as an input this is one of the questions they getting my point things are going to be very tough so before conclusion this is the algo sir mm -hmm. this is algo algorithm no you need to write a complete piece of code yeah obviously you need to use an algorithm but you need to write a complete piece of code to com uh, answer this and trust me the 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 companies are not easy they have the last last um, let me think in in Deloitte, <coughs> there was no, not in Deloitte. I forgot the name of the company. They had a technical round one, technical round two, and technical round three. Now here in this technical rounds, you will be asked questions from each and everything you have done. So generally, people do not survive one interviews. So they have three technical rounds for that company. Try harder. Try to write piece of quotes properly. Because see, where do we stand? I'm talking about the reality. Do not take it otherwise. If I if I tell you to write a prime number right now in front of me for the moment, I believe you'll not be able to write the program. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all of us in this lockdown. What lockdown has made us for the moment? If I'm giving you anyone in the meeting, can uh, from the students, can you? I mean. 
tell me in confidence that you can write a program for prime number sharing your screen right now i guarantee nobody can let it be first to fourth year nobody can properly write it because we have faced the lockdown so you need to bridge this gap sir in which language sir any language of your choice and you need not write the program you can just tell me the logic by just just the algo steps anyways so this is our responsibility because we are going to you know we we need to get the jobs so let's start today after the session right now so open your you know make a list what you want to perform and get started with google you have your teachers go for counseling if needed what should we do from where should we start because what is coming ahead is very tough based on the placement of several i do not make you read news based on the placements of several colleges companies are also rejecting people for getting 10 pointer who will be taking uh, students who have given offline exam online examination and got 9.7 or 10 pointer because they cannot write a simple piece of code and he will be expecting uh, an odd number to come in but you will go and face questions like such which i just told you i think sir he will every time ask sir a basic question like he doesn't as a student doesn't know such basic question but student doesn't and see a student who will not be able to perform a uh prime number will not be able to perform anything i believe i am showing you a question hold on just moment i am sharing my screen read the question and try to figure it out it's yes, it's the questions this was the easiest among them in the examination team can you see my screen no sir these are the questions which we attend normally uh, on placement exams in order to finish the game a player needs to complete n missions the missions are numbered as from 0 to n minus 1 the gate mission has an integer dk assigned representing the difficulty level during a day you can perform any number of missions given the following rules the mission should be performed in the specific order that is the mission can be undertaken only if the mission is uh, only the mission preceding sorry preceding has already been completed this is the first rule the difference between the difficulty levels of any of the two missions performed on the same day would not be greater than the integer x write a function solution uh, public in this you can see it that given an array d of n integers and an integer x returns the minimum number of days required to complete all the missions in the game so now examples given here provided that there are no test cases as sample input now for this given program for all the programs all the three programs it was given So now you tell me, due to this lockdown, where do we stand? I'll be sharing this question with uh, uh, Nakshi Ma'am so that you you get it. Can you solve this question? And this will actually help you. These are the questions that comes. Also, try for for different you know companies. You search the questions and check. This is just simple. This is even a dynamic program. Getting my point? Thing. So start coding before we jump to any other things. At least we should know all the basics. And you know, just since I asked you to write a time number and I said that you can write it, do not take it like that. You understand the logic, and then you start dealing with them. Understand? Can you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is for all of us. No, we are lagging like behind. So we need to cover up. Okay, it's already our time. I will not. Sir, I have one question, sir. Yep. Sir, uh, which language I have to know, sir? For uh, for future, sir. For future, for future, for programming, sir. Yes, you wish. Like, uh, sir, Java, yeah, either Python. Future, you sir. In programming, not a problem. You choose your programming. You go ahead. You need not to have any preference. For placements, sir. For placements, see different companies have different positions. If you're talking about, I'm talking about giving an example of a simple company, HRT. So in HRT, there are sections where they use Java, where they use React. There are sections where they use Python. 
there are sections where they use Laravel something for the website. So there are different. I mean, you should go to the website. You should see that which company you want to go to. And if you're preparing for uh, placements, then try to check the company's requirement and display your CV and culture and learn it. So that they can, if you question you, you can answer about their technology. They're more concerned about what their company's workflow is than the things which you know. I will start with C and with Python to know all of them. Hello, sir. Sir, but sir, uh, now it is sir. Which one is a uh, demand, sir? Learn all of them. Sir, learn learn at least four languages, right? You should be complete. Yes, Java, sir. Python. Yes, sir. And because uh, uh, sir, I am a, I am a master student, sir. But uh, not a. Uh, I think that two to three, uh, two to three languages, sir. You're a master's, uh, I mean, uh, you're in which uh, department, master's? MC, sir. Master in computer application. Master in computer application. So you might be knowing. Uh, Pintu Singh, you are from computer applications department. I'm very sorry because I'm interrupting you, sir. Uh, yeah. You are from computer applications department, and you are in the first year. You are uh, so many languages to know in the next. Please, uh, you have uh, already. <coughs> See, he has left the session. I hope so. And, uh, sir, is anything uh, left to? No, ma'am. It's all fine. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. Sure, Sri, ma'am, uh, is anything left? No, ma'am. It's all done. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm very happy that uh, you are. Well, we all are very happy having both of you between us. Thanks a lot, sir, and thanks a lot, ma'am. Uh, the day three program is over. We have spent a very much interesting and interactive session with both of our uh, scholarly speakers. Uh, thanks a lot for your so much cooperation with us. We are lucky enough to have both of you with us. Hope so. In many. I would like to. Uh, I would like to add uh, a couple of words. Uh, very much. Just to, uh, sorry for Ma'am, I could not understand. I mean, Ma'am, I could not understand in your thing. Ma'am, please tell me again. Okay. You just. Have, just one second. Been pushing, you have left the session, and the session is being over now. I uh, Shatrudra sir is going to tell something. Then. Yes. I I I told you. I just wanted to thank both uh, Mohito and Shreyasri for being with us and uh, delivering such a wonderful series of talks and giving hands-on experience to our our learners or student learners. Um, you know, uh, we were. It was lovely to have both of you here, and we hope this association of ours continues. So Mohito and Shreyasri, both of you, we would like to have you back again. Some other session at some other time. So uh, please don't forget us. And uh, I hope that uh, it was uh, you had a, as much pleasure presenting your uh, sessions as we had attending them. So uh, I hope that this is a start of a long connection and association between both of you. Sure, and thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, sir. Also, in many more future programs arranged by HIT, we will meet again. Sure, ma'am. Sure. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank so, you very much for being here. Uh, I'm now uh, handing over the uh, session to our head of the department, Mr. Apati Mitro. He has to say something. Okay, Shomudutu and Sujashi, very, very thanks to you for having a very good session. Uh, I am also attending the inter inter session from 9:30 which is the I think join over here. But it is very much interesting and hoping uh, in the uh, near future we are also conducting you and we are just uh, hope that you will also deliver your valuable talk over in this kind of webinar. Okay, so I'm not taking so much time. It is out of time we are running. So th again, thank you, so Sri and Shomodito. And all my students who are joined over there and my colleagues. Okay, so goodbye. And have a Thank day. you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. <laughs>
so today's session is over and we'll meet in the in uh, 4th and 5th december for our next session with uh, our uh, new uh, experts your new our new honorable speakers from the time i hope so from 11 am i will uh, i will uh, if anything to inform later on i will inform it through the uh, person group uh, so uh, I'm uh, just ending the session for today. Thanks to all of the participants. Thanks to our conveners and thanks to her, the head of the department. And thanks to uh, our uh, speakers, Mr. Sumadatta Basu and Ms. Sriyoshi Sharkar. Hope so we'll meet, we, uh, we'll meet again later on. So I'm and thank you, Vibhasha ma'am, for a wonderful session, for your wonderful coordination. Thank you very much. Without you and without uh, Somodita and Shreyoshi, obviously, this would not have been fruitful. Well, we all are, doing, we all, all are doing our own job, sir. Oh, thank you from our side. So, leaving the session.